One, two, three, four, five, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. What up, fam? Today I got a special video for you guys. Today we're gonna talk about Dr. Rappaport's marathon fueling energy consumption model of how much fuel you should be taking uh, during a marathon to not hit the wall or bonk. Uh, and there are a lot of calculations. I'm gonna go over the introduction of the concept of Rapp Rappaport's method, and then I'm gonna do some calculations after I go over the introduction of myself and my fueling. You guys can pause the video, um, I'll try to talk slow, and uh, you can plug in your own numbers and I'll explain the numbers as we go through them to figure out how much carbohydrate you need, how much fluid you need, how much sodium you need, whether you want to take caffeine or not, and the such. If you guys like content like this, please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, so Rappaport's energy consumption method for the marathon. Basically, Dr. Rappaport found that it takes a certain amount of energy per mile and per pound of body weight to move a runner from point A to point B. This amount is conveniently about one calorie, kcal or big C calorie uh, per kilogram of body mass per kilometer of running. As you guys probably know, the energy sources that a runner use is primarily based on carbohydrates and fats. The slower you're going, the higher proportion of fats you're using as fuel, and the faster you're going, the higher proportion of carbohydrate you're using as fuel. Now, hitting the wall or bonking the marathon has to do when you run out of carbohydrates. Part of Rappaport's equation takes into consideration how much carbohydrate you have in the body. Carbohydrate is stored as glycogen in both the liver and skeletal muscle. The liver is tightly regulated by the body in terms of uh, use and storage of glycogen. And since we are running and primarily obviously using our leg muscles, we take in consideration, according to Rappaport, the mass of a runner's leg muscles. The energy stored in your leg muscles is also based on your body mass, the size and density of uh, carbohydrates stored in your legs. For most people, leg muscle max makes up about 21% of a person's mass, but for the ease of math, as you'll see in a little bit, we'll just change that to 20%. And a typical runner stores about 36 calories worth of carbs per pound of muscle, or 80 kcal per kilogram of muscle. Now you guys need to know the relative speed that you will run your marathon at. This equation takes into consideration the percentage of VO2 max. If you guys don't know what VO2 max is, VO2 max is milliliters of oxygen consumed in one minute per kilogram of body weight. Ironically, body weight does not factor into the end result, but heavier runners do require more energy to cover a given distance, but they also have more carbohydrates conveniently stored in their body. If you don't know your VO2 max, check out Jack Daniels VDOT calculator link in the description down below. You can plug in your most best performance race into that calculator and it will tell you your predicted VO2 max. Now, most people are able to run a marathon at about 60 to 85% of their VO2 max, with the more fit runners being on the upper end, the less fit runners being on the lower end. Now, the values provided when I do my values are assuming that I and you are fully glycogen loaded by the time you tow the starting line at your marathon. Now it's possible to not be fully glycogen stored or have full glycogen stores. Maybe you're somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're on the lower end of glycogen store by the time you hit the starting line. So when you guys are doing the math, you can take a conservative approach and plug in conservative numbers. Now this equation isn't perfect. There are some limitations. Obviously not all runners have the same leg mass and you'll probably not be running at a constant velocity uh, for your VO2 max. So because of the limitations or error within the model, uh, there may be a 5 to 10% error, which can equate to 1 to 2 miles uh, of when you will hit the wall in a marathon. So, again, take a conservative approach in doing this math. All right, so that's the introduction. Next, let's go over some calculations. Up on screen, you can see the calculations for me. You guys can plug in your numbers as we go through. Pause the video if you need to, uh, to, you know, get a pen and paper, write the stuff down, and calculate how much you need. All right, so... I typically weigh about 120 pounds. We know that there are 2.2 kilograms per pound. So, oh, and guys, I also rounded up for most of these numbers. So if you're doing my math to so check my math, uh, it may be a little off because I rounded up to either to a whole number or to the next decimal. But that would put me at 54.55 kilograms. Now, what I stated earlier introduction for Rappaport's uh, initial calculation that you know, it takes a certain amount of energy to move runner from point A to point B, and conveniently, 
This amount is about one calorie per kilogram of body mass per kilometer of running. So in that second part right there where it says calories burn, 42.195 is the distance of a marathon in kilometers times 54.55 kilograms, how much I weigh, uh, 2,302 calories is probably what I need to run uh, that marathon. Now we need to calculate it per mile. So 2,302 divided by 26.2 miles is 87.9 calories per mile, rounded up to 88 calories per mile. <clears throat> now, Rap Report also says that the relative use, remember, uh, if you run faster, you're using more carbohydrate. If you're running lower, you're using probably more fat as proportion for fuel. Um, a runner can run 60 to about 85% uh, of their VO2 max. So we're gonna be a little conservative here, but we're gonna do 88 calories times 0.75 or 75% of my VO2 max, which means I'm burning probably about 66 calories per mile. So we do 66 calories times 26.2 equals 1,729 calories needed from carbohydrate. Next, we gotta calculate uh, potential carbohydrate storage in our leg muscles. So 54.55 kilograms times 0.2, which is the average proportion of leg mass. Remember, we rounded down instead of 21 to 20%. That puts my leg mass at about 10.91 kilograms. 10.91 kilograms times 80 K cal or calories per kilogram or 36 calories per pound equals 873 calories needed for potential carb storage. So that's how much I need <clears throat> for potential carb storage, how much my leg muscles are expected to store. So we take the calories from carbohydrate needed, which was the 1,729 calories minus the needed calories needed for potential carb storage is 873 calories equals 856 calories needed. This is not taking consideration, fam, um, you know, the, the weather, um, whether you're running into a headwind, um, the temperature of the day, often race temperature is 44 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything below, anything above will start to affect your performance. So your body's working harder. So you're using more carbohydrate. If you're running to head when your, your oxygen consumption is going to increase. Same thing with running up a hill. So the velocity of that VO2 max percentage is not going to be constant. So you got to take that into consideration. So you may need more when the conditions aren't favorable in terms of carbohydrate. All right. So I need 856 calories. We know that the body can use or utilize effectively without gastric upset um, about 60 to 90 grams per hour of carbohydrate or broke that down to calories. 240 to 360 calories per hour from carbohydrate uh, is the max amount your body can deal with. Um, so in other words, do not take fuel all at once. Um, spread it out. And we'll talk about that in a sec. And next is we do not want to lose fluids, at least a certain amount, right? Once we get to about 2%, the efficiency of caloric burning starts to decrease and you know, you can get muscle spasms and all that stuff from dehydration. So for fluids, you do not want to lose more than 2% of body weight. So 0.02, 2% of body weight times 120 pounds is 2.4 pounds. So I don't want to lose more than 2.4 pounds during this marathon. Now I'm running the Houston marathon. As you guys know, the Houston marathon has 16 water stops. So we're going to go from there. We know that one ounce, typically in one of those pinch cups you get by the time you're shaking it and get it down you, is about one gulp. There are 16 fluid ounces in a pound. So 2.4 pounds times 16 ounces is 38.4 ounces. So divide that by 16, meaning I would need about 2.4 cups per water stop, or which I'm planning on doing it this time, and I couldn't do it at the Chicago Marathon last time because the officials maybe dumped my water before I can get into the gate, which sucked. But I plan on starting with an eight ounce bottle of Morton 320. So since I already got that bottle with eight ounces in there, we take our 38.4 ounces minus eight ounces. We got 30.4 ounces, which means I would need about two water cups per stop, which doing this math, it's enough for fluid, but there's a problem. I'm gonna get to that in a sec. You also gotta make sure you get about 350 milligrams of sodium per liter of fluid and um, obviously talk to your doctor when it comes to caffeine consumption. Um, about 175 to 350 milligrams of caffeine. You know caffeine is a pretty strong ergogenic aid when it comes to uh, running performance. Um, caffeine is shown to help refuel muscle glycogen quicker. Uh, it decreases per perceived exertion and it obviously increases performance. 
All right, obviously my fueling is gonna be Morton. So I'm planning on taking a gel at the starting line uh, of Morton 100, which has 100 calories, 25 grams of carbs, 50 milligrams of sodium, 20 minutes from the start. I'm gonna have in hand an eight ounce uh, bottle of Morton 320, uh, which obviously is cut in half. Um, 160 calories, 40 grams of carbs, 315 milligrams of uh, sodium. Hopefully finish by mile four, then chuck the bottle. I'm gonna plan on taking a gel every five miles. So at mile five, I'm gonna take another Morton Gel 100, same breakdown of caloric calories and sodium and carbs. The ones with the asterisks, mile 10 and mile 20, are gonna be a Martin Gel calf. Uh, same concept breakdown besides the caffeine, each of those have 100 milligrams of caffeine. So 10 caffeinated, 15 non-caffeinated, 20 caffeinated, 25 non-caffeinated. <clears throat> Let's see. So adding up all those calories from the Mortons alone, from the needed 856 calories, we can subtract the 760 calories from these Mortons and, and gel. Uh, I still need 96 calories. So if we take the 96 divide by 66 in the beginning of this equation, how much I need per mile, that's about one and a half miles. So my body would probably would plan on bonking around 24.7 or hitting the wall. So I need 96-ish more calories, 100 more calories. So the cool thing about uh, Houston, there is Gatorade on the course. So we know that Gatorade has 80 calories per 12 ounce. So 80 divided by 12 is around seven, guys, I rounded up, uh, seven calories per ounce of cup. So that means I need at least one Gatorade cup every other mile on top of the two water cups that I'm planning on taking per mile from the calculation prior. If you don't want to carry five gels, there is an option. You can carry four gels and increase your fluid intake by one Gatorade cup per mile. So you can either do four gels and take two Gatorade and one water per stop, or you can carry five gels and take one Gatorade and two water per stop. And this is also assuming you started with the eight ounce bottle of uh, Morton. So the total fluid I'll be taking if the stars align and everything goes well, would be about 56 fluid ounces with the starting bottle, which is well over the 38.4 ounces I stated that I don't want to lose 2% of body weight in the beginning, which <laughs> 56 ounces is about 1.6 liters, which means proportionally I would need about 579 milligrams of sodium minimum. And from the gels and Morton alone, I'm getting around 615 milligrams from that. And uh, that's the math. And this is why it's so much easier to have bottles set up for you if you're able to get into the uh, elite corral. And, uh, and you can also see why from this calculation that if you start too hot, you will bonk. Whether if you get out, you know, I'm feeling good, you're running really fast, but you're using more carbohydrate as proportion or the conditions aren't favorable like Chicago this past year and you decide to hold your projected marathon pace in unfavorable conditions, chances are you're probably gonna be using more carbohydrate as fuel and you're gonna bonk a lot sooner. I'll do a separate video where I take the graph, you know, from the Chicago marathon where I bonked and maybe plug in these values and like how many uh, do it in reverse and you know how many gels I took and see where I bonked and where I went wrong Which is kind of cool. If you guys have any questions comment down below Here's another video you guys can check out my marathon recovery plan up in here and My old marathon fueling plan up in here where I talk about other things I'll be taking in a non calculative sense which ironically is pretty close minus all the math But you guys can check it out as well like share comment subscribe hit the notification bell for when I post my next video Love you guys catch you guys next time. Peace Thank you.